Hello, my name is Julia Holland and I am a doctoral student at Kansas State University. Today I will be sharing with you a project that evaluated the impact of essential fatty acids in lactation diets on both sow and litter performance as well as litter survivability. We would like to express our appreciation to Smithfield Foods for their collaboration and technical support throughout this experiment. This experiment is part of the five-year Improving Pig Survivability project that encompasses research, education, and extension efforts with the goal of reducing overall mortality in the U.S. commercial swine industry. This project is funded by the National Pork Board and the Foundation for Food and Agriculture Research. Historically, Supplemental fat sources are utilized in swine diets as a tool to increase energy intake for sows. However, fat sources also provide essential fatty acids that support brain, vision, and immune system development of piglets, and they also play a role in the reproductive function of sows. Now when fat is supplied to diets for sows, both the colostrum and milk fat is also commonly observed to increase, and this can further support enhanced litter growth as well as survivability of their litters. Sows primarily secrete essential fatty acids in milk, and if sows do not consume enough EFA, they can enter a state of deficiency that impairs subsequent reproductive performance, especially for older parity sows. As a result, it's been suggested that sows should consume at least 125 grams per day of linoleic acid and at least 10 grams per day of alpha-linolenic acid to optimize reproductive performance. Furthermore, research from Australia suggests that increasing linoleic acid intake can also reduce piglet mortalities. However, from these studies, we do not know if providing high EFA to sows shortly prior to farrowing can yield similar benefits. Therefore, the objective of this study was to determine the influence of fat sources providing either low or high essential fatty acids fed prior to farrowing and then throughout lactation on sow performance, litter growth and livability, colostrum and milk composition, and subsequent farrowing performance. This 12-month experiment began in August of 2020 and was completed in July of 2021. For this trial, sows were randomly allotted to one of four dietary treatments. In total, there were 850 to 874 sows per treatment, and the average parity of this herd was 4.7. Approximately three days prior to farrowing, sows were provided 1.8 kilograms per day of their assigned diet until farrowing. And at that point, sows were then provided ad libitum access to feed for the remainder of the lactation period. In an attempt to standardize starting litter sizes among sows within treatment, piglets were allowed to be cross-fostered within 24 hours of farrowing. The first experimental diet served as the control lactation diet that was corn, soybean meal, and wheat-based. Since all treatments were provided in a pelleted form, half a percentage of choice white grease was provided in the control treatment. The choice white grease diet was formulated similar to the control with the exception of fat source inclusion at 3% of choice white grease to increase energy density but provide low essential fatty acids. Treatment 3 also contained 3% of added fat but this time as soybean oil, which contains high concentrations of linoleic and alpha-linolenic acid to help the sow meet those daily EFA intake recommendations. Lastly, the combination treatment contained both 3% soybean oil and an additional 2% of choice white grease to provide both high essential fatty acids, but also further increase energy density of the diet. Among response criteria, farrowing performance, lactation length, sow body weight and back fat change, and average daily feed intake were recorded for every individual sow. Additionally, litter growth performance and survivability were recorded. To evaluate potential changes in colostrum and milk composition, a subset of 10 sows per treatment were randomly selected for sample collection. After the lactation period, 
subsequent reproductive performance, including the sow's wean to estrus interval, the percentage of sows bred by day seven and by day 12, farrowing rate and litter sizes were recorded. As we move into the results, first we'll start with overall lactation average daily feed intake. Overall, sows provided the choice white grease and the combination treatments had significantly greater average daily feed intake throughout the lactation period than that of sows provided either the soybean oil or the control treatments. Regardless of the differences in average daily feed intake, however, sows provided high essential fatty acids in the soybean oil and combination treatments still consumed greater linoleic acid and alpha linolenic acid on a daily basis throughout lactation compared to that of sows provided low essential fatty acids in the choice white grease and the control treatments. For the subset of sows randomly selected for colostrum and milk sample collections, we did not observe any differences in dry matter, crude protein, or crude fat content of colostrum or milk. But we did observe a significant influence of essential fatty acid intake on the fatty acid profiles. Although diets were not provided to sows until approximately three days prior to farrowing, the elevated linoleic acid and alpha linolenic acid content of the diets were reflected in the colostrum of sows provided the soybean oil and combination treatments when compared to that of low essential fatty acid content within the choice white grease and control treatments. Furthermore, the EFA content of milk at weaning was also significantly greater for sows consuming high essential fatty acid diets compared to that of low essential fatty acid diets. Despite the elevated EFAs observed in both the colostrum and milk and the large sample size of nearly 3,500 sows evaluated in the present study, we did not observe any influence of dietary treatments on litter survivability from birth to 24 hours of age, nor were there any differences in livability from 24 hours of age until weaning. In terms of litter growth performance, however, although sows provided the soybean oil treatment consumed significantly less feed on a daily basis throughout lactation, litters from sows provided high EFA in this treatment and the combination fat treatment had significantly greater total litter weight gain compared to that of sows provided low essential fatty acids in the control treatment with the choice white grease treatment being intermediate. Furthermore, even though litter sizes were similar across treatments, individual piglets from sows consuming high EFA were approximately 0.2 kilograms or almost half a pound heavier at weaning compared to piglets from litters provided low EFA in the choice white grease or the control treatments. At the conclusion of the lactation period, sows were placed on a common gestation diet and followed for subsequent reproductive performance. Of the 637 to 655 sows within each treatment, we did not observe any influence of EFA intake during the previous lactation period on the sows return to estrus, the percentage of sows bred by day seven or day 12, farrowing rate, or subsequent litter size. In conclusion, we observe that providing diets to lactating sows with high EFA increased colostrum and milk essential fatty acid content. We believe that this supported overall improved litter weight gain, litter average daily gain, and heavier body weights of piglets at weaning. However, we did not observe any influence of sow EFA intake on overall litter survivability or on overall subsequent reproductive performance of sows. Thank you for watching and please be sure to visit the Improving Pig Livability website to access additional resources for reducing overall mortality in the U.S. swine industry.